view. We're looking at this new feature summary here. I'll scroll down. It's a new 3D composition render, Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D is from a company called Maxon, and it's a great 3D product. And for years, the folks who use Cinema 4D have been working with After Effects at the same time. And it's a pretty good workflow back in the day, where if you're working in Cinema 4D, you have when you make a 3D project, it has multiple layers. It's really very complex. Some layers will be for reflection, some layers will be for refraction, some will be for glows, things like that. It's all these different layers comprise a 3D project. And you can import all those layers as video files into After Effects and work on them in After Effects. Well, now there's a new workflow in After Effects where you have the Cinema 4D engine running inside uh, After Effects called the CineRender, which allows you to take a Cinema 4D project and animate it without having to render the video files. And if you want to go back to Cinema 4D to fix it, you can fix it and it shows up inside After Effects. It's a great workflow. And now with this release of After Effects, they now have the Cine Renderer, the Cinema 4D 3D Renderer running as a 3D render inside After Effects. From my point of view, though, it's a work in progress and it does not replace the current 3D render, which is called Ray Trace. So I'll show you what I'm talking about. Go to back to After Effects here and I've got this 3D update thing here. Now, with, <clears throat> if you're new to After Effects, this may be pretty cool. You maybe have never seen this before. But if you're, if you're working with After Effects, you can, you can um, extrude text and shapes. So you take any text and you can extrude it to make it 3D like this. And you do that with something called the Ray Traced 3D Renderer. That's something that's been in After Effects for a few versions now. And it's you know, very cool. It looks really great, right? And when you, to do this, you switch a layer this particular text layer here, you turn on this 3D switch. It's below the little box. The box, box tells you that if you want to click the switch, it'll become a 3D layer, layer. And when you click that, you get this little button up here. If you don't have 3D click there, you won't see this. But with, with that layer as 3D, that means this composition now is going to be in 3D. And you choose the render up here. Now, there's another way to do that. You can just right-click on, comp on the composition like this and go to Composition Settings. And inside Composition Settings, there's a 3D Renderer tab. And that's how you get to the renderer. But what's nice about it is that now when you change a layer to a 3D layer, you get this little button up here, which gives you direct access to that particular panel. And what's new to 2017 is in this drop-down list, in addition to Classic 3D, which is sometimes called 2.5D because it's 2D objects in 3D space, so it's flat things inside 3D space, there now is a Cinema 4D renderer there. Now, to me, it's not something you should use yet. Um, I think it's great that they're incorporating it, and my guess is they're going to improve it as they go forward, but in fact, if you use Cinema 4D render, it's a step backwards. So if you hear people getting all excited about the Cinema 4D render, I would ask them why they're excited about it, because at this point, I don't see any reason to get excited about it at this moment, but I think long term it's a good thing. But I'll show you what I mean. So here, this particular 3D thing that I created, which is very easy to create, you just make text and then click on the 3D box there, and then you then you extrude it. This is a ray traced 3D thing. You can tell it's ray traced because it says it's ray traced up there. And if I open it up and go to something called Material Options, there's Geometry Options where you extrude it. See, it says Extrusion Depth, and I have it deeply extruded, 190 pixels, it's very deep, and has a bevel as well. That's, that's where you adjust the geometry of it. But down here under Material is where you adjust the appearance of it. And at the bottom of Material you see Transparency, Transparency Roll-Off, and Index of Refraction. This allows you to have transparency in the text. You can see little things showing up through it there. I'm looking at my monitor down here, and you should be able to see that there's some transparency here that allows you to see into it. If I play this, you'll see the animation there. You can see the transparency maybe more obviously. All right? Well, guess what? Take a look at those things down there. If I change the render to Cinema 4D, all the refraction, all the transparency goes away. It does not allow you to have transparency. Notice it's all opaque now. So that, to me, is a real drawback, and um, some people say that the Cinema 4D render is faster. If you want to animate it, it works better than you, if you want to animate it. I have not noticed any obvious differences in rendering speeds. 
So I would say it's a work in progress. It's kind of cool they're doing it, but it's not ready for prime time. So I would go back to Ray Trace 3D and notice that the, that the um, transparency issues come back. And by the way, because I had rendered this before, uh, After Effects remembers that you've rendered it before now that it's switched back. So I don't have to re-render it. It will play in real time like this because I've played it in real time before. So once you play something in real time, it stores it on your hard drive and or in RAM. And if you change it but then go back to the original thing, one of the cool things about After Effects is that it remembers that. So look how smooth that works. If I had not done it, it would have been kind of, you know, pixelated. Okie dokie. So if you have any questions, again, if you have any questions, feel free to type in a question and I'll try to catch it over in my question pod over here on my other monitor. Uh, if I don't see it right away, you know, I'll try to get it sooner or later. All right, let me go back to the uh, this page here. It says performance improvements. This, this is, you would think this would be not such a big deal because this should have been happening all along, but it hasn't been. After Effects has never been oriented towards playing back video smoothly. It just hasn't been that kind of a thing. It's more special effects, and special effects consume a lot of processor power, and so you sort of expect that they necessarily won't go quickly. But After Effects is now sort of catching up to video editing products. If you work with Premiere Pro, for example, and you, and you just press your space bar to watch a video, it plays smoothly, which is great. It's what you expect. Well, in After Effects, it, it didn't happen. But now, with this release of 2017, playback of video is smooth. I just press the space bar and off it runs, and there's no hesitation, no pausing, nothing like that. So now it plays video smoothly. And even if I add some effects to this, it'll still play smoothly. It won't necessarily play smoothly with all effects added, but you know, generally speaking, if I add a few effects, particularly ones with that little marker there on the right-hand side, not the one on the left that says 32, but the one on the right, the one on the right means that it's, it's GPU accelerated. I'll talk about that in a second. If it's GPU accelerated, then it runs off your graphics processing unit and works more smoothly but, and, and presumably faster. But I'll just drag that down there and add Gaussian blur. I'll make it blurry, which is not necessarily a good thing for this, but I just want to show you how that works. And let's say I'll add a hue saturation as well. And that also is an accelerated effect, that one. And we'll change the hue a little bit like that. Looks terrible, but I just want to show you how this works. If I go back and play this now, notice there's nothing green, nothing blue there. That means it has not been rendered already. If I just press the space bar, it'll play it in pretty close to real time. In fact, it's playing it real time, just like that. So even with the effects applied, the new system now plays video in real time. And if you apply some effects to them, it should play it in real time as well. So that's a good, that's a good thing. Thank you for watching this video. My name is Jeff Sangstack, an Adobe Certified Expert and the Lead Instructor here at BlueEffects.net. If you want to watch this entire video lesson, as well as other live classes and After Effects crash courses, then I invite you to check out the Blue Effects After Effects Academy. Just click the link below this video to find out what we've prepared for you in the After Effects Academy.